Welcome to the Adam Does Movies Podcast, Episode 8. Today is going to be a mess. And it's probably going to be a shorter affair this time. It's been a, it's been a busy last couple weeks with uh, Father's Day. My wife had a birthday. Just a lot of stuff going on. I've been taking surf lessons in the mornings with my kids. It's been a disaster, but a, a glorious one, to say the least. It's always been on my bucket list to go surfing. I'm glad I had the opportunity now that I live in South Carolina little bit more ocean than we have in Minnesota. And uh, thankfully I can report back that I'm up on the board. I'm doing it. I'm basically a professional now. I might just leave this whole YouTube podcast movie review thing behind me and, and just surf full time. But until then, until we get there, today I wanted to kind of um, jump off of what I talked about last week, which was the nostalgia we have for blockbuster Hollywood video movie rentals, things like that, but taken in a different direction. I kind of alluded to it, I touched upon it last week, but really the crux of this, uh, this conversation is going to be movies are now looked at differently than they were even 10 years ago, even a decade back. Everything feels more like content now. It feels like an advertisement for another property down the road. It's more about making a franchise or a universe then it is just making a damn good single story. One that inevitably would get spun off into sequels and prequels and sidequels and whatever. But at the time of making it, it was genuine. There was, there was passion put into it. I'm talking about movies like E.T., The Wizard of Oz, Terminator, things from all different ends of the spectrum, Home Alone even. You watch some of the behind the scenes making ofs on these movies and your jaw will drop at what they went through to get these films off the ground. The months and months of planning just to stake out the right house, the right location, the, the, the family that looks like a cohesive unit. It wasn't about checking boxes as far as race and gender and, and all that stuff. Now don't get me wrong, the inclusion, that whole discussion is long overdue. It's good that Hollywood has it. It's good that they've been kicked in the butt to wake up and realize there's more than just white dudes on the planet. Um, but they, of course, like everything with Hollywood, they overcompensate and they make it a focus. They make it a focal point instead of just putting actors that fit for roles, putting diversity in your movie without having to scream to the mountaintops about it. Because believe it or not, it's not a good ma marketing tactic. It annoys people. It makes people think that your focus isn't on the story, the picture itself, but on appeasing a certain demographic or, or giving yourself a pat on the back for just doing the bare minimum. It's kind of pathetic, honestly. I just miss the days, and of course this is going to make me sound like an old man talking about back in my day. It's going to age me, and that's okay. <laughs> but I do miss the simpler times when you would you wouldn't hear much about the movie until it hit theaters you would go and kind of make up your own mind now it seems like movies are announced years in advance we usually have teasers of actors that are going to be in it we usually have teases of the storyline we usually have teases of the budget it all just kind of gets slowly leaked out over months and years and everybody's already formed an opinion or taken a side on a movie. Of course, I'm talking about bigger films from the DCU or the MCU or just things Disney puts out. It's, it's just sad. It's not fun. It's not magical. And I've seen lately, The Flash is a great example. People released, leaked the whole movie months ahead of the actual premiere of the film. And then they're throwing clips online and making fun of the flick and calling people out for going to movies based on characters that are in it and how this actor's terrible. You're supporting this awful actor because you saw this flick. We do not want to go down that road. You go down that road, it's a, it's a very slippery slope. Hope you're not wearing any name brand shoes right now or tweeting out from your iPhone or your Android, your smart device, because I hate to break it to you, that was made with sweatshop labor. And so... By your own standards, you're supporting the practice. It's way too ugly. It's way too messy. We live in a capital world. 
and with it um, comes capital gains. And you have to look the other way, or you will basically be a hermit living in a cave if you're going to judge everyone by that criteria. It's just impossible. Let's get to the, 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 the focal point of this, though. In the 90s, the 80s, whatnot, a movie would genuinely get a trailer, maybe a second trailer, I think it was about two, and that was it. That was it. Of course, there was the press tour, the press junkets, you had Mel Gibson out on the road, you had Bruce Willis and Arnold and Stallone and all the big names, Tom Cruise, who's still just as big now, which is incredibly impressive. Um... But otherwise, there really wasn't anything else. HBO might have a, a making of featurette that's 10 minutes long with some of the same footage you've already seen. But then you get excited. You get hyped for the movie. You, you drag your dad's ass out to the theater, beg him to take you to the rated R movie. You watch it. It's an experience. And you know that this experience is going to have to last for the next eight to 12 months because that movie is not hitting DVD for at least that amount of time. And that's one of the big ways things have changed. Just the trailer releases itself. We talked about the hype leading up to a movie. Talk about the trailers. Now we get maybe three for each big movie, sometimes four, sometimes there's a teaser, sometimes there's two teasers, I've seen teasers for the teaser before online. What are we even doing anymore? A 10 second teaser for a hype trailer that leads to a full trailer that leads to a second and final trailer? Dear God, I've seen half the movie. I'm being dramatic, but you get the point. There's, there's no reason for this much. There's just really no reason. Then we have the actual release of the film. It hits theaters and ever since COVID, post COVID, this has really become egregious. The movie will sit in theaters for a few weeks and then boom, next thing you know, it's already available on streaming services. Sometimes same day. Now, convenience is of course a luxury and it's one that we're all taking for granted for better and for worse. What I mean is because we don't have that long period of time, because we don't have that hype going into a film anymore, it's kind of gone. We have so much at our fingertips at any given moment between Netflix, Hulu, Apple Plus, Amazon Prime, Peacock. Like there's a bunch of these and each one of them is competing for our time, which means they have to be churning out movie after movie after TV show after TV show. And not only that, they need to make sure that day one release at the theaters hits day one on their platform or within 60 days. Guys like Tom Cruise go to Paramount Plus and they yell at him. He begs them to not put Maverick on their streaming service for at least 90 days or longer. I know he did that with Maverick and man, was that the right call. Guy made a stupid amount of money for the company. But that's a, um, that's an example of one company doing it right one time. <laughs> You have a lot of examples of the complete opposite happening where a film like The Suicide Squad goes to theaters and Mortal Kombat and Kong vs. Godzilla and also it releases on HBO Max at the time it was HBO Max. Now it's just called Max for some stupid reason. Day one. So people had the option to get dressed, drive their ass to the theater, sometimes on a cold stormy day, plop down eight to 12 bucks per ticket to sit in a theater that could be smelly, could be noisy, could have a lot of distractions for two hours, or they could pay nothing and watch it at home because they already have the subscription they pay for every single month. It seemed like kind of a no brainer for many. Now, of course, a fool like myself, I will always go to the theater if given the opportunity because I'm, selfishly and ignorantly hanging on to a pastime that's not ever the same as it used to be, and that's going to the movies. Here's the harsh, here's the harsh truth, at least in my area. And we're gonna kind of move down this cycle. We talked about the, the pre-release, we talked about the movie trailers themselves, we talked about the release schedule for movies, and now we're gonna talk about the movie experience in theaters. In the 90s, there was some uh, 
decorum, civility, self-respect. That's all gone. <laughs> That's all gone. Yeah, there's always been, you know, loud talkers in the movies. There's always been the obnoxious person who's slurping his soda or eating his popcorn way too loud. But now we're dealing with so much more. Hell, every time I go to the movies, there's, there's kids in their pajamas. There's grown adults in their pajamas. Can we not even dress up anymore? I'm not talking your Sunday best, but a t-shirt and some pants? That, that aren't connected? That aren't a onesie? Do we really need to bring our old ass nasty bacteria filled pillow and blanket to the theater to watch the next Ant-Man movie? No, I don't think so. I think you could probably put a little effort in. Maybe run a comb through the hair. Put on some perfume, maybe put on just some deodorant at bare min, short for minimum, and then respectfully bring yourself into the movies, carry yourself with a little bit of dignity, for Christ's sakes. And then you sit down and you watch the film silently. It's okay to whisper once in a while to your buddy, point out something cool, engage with the film a little bit. But when you sit on your phone and your brightness is at 80% and it's distracting, it's taking me out of the movie. It's not a magical experience that I paid 12 bucks for. It's a nightmare because I'm reminded of all the assholes that I deal with on a day-to-day -day when I wanted to get lost in a different world. And that's just one thing, you know? I've had people vape in the theaters several times. Vape in the theater. Amazing. The thing's often not cleaned. There's sticky crap all over the floor. These theaters are understaffed, overworked. The regal that I go to is embarrassing. Most of the times the toilets are broken down you have three standing urinals, one of them's working, two of them out of commish. The stalls are, I, I won't even go near there. The faucets don't shut off completely, so there's already running water when you enter. That's nice. That's a nice thing to look at. You got the, the soaked paper towels sitting on the side of the table. That's, that's the experience I want to have going to a regal. Ironic name. Very ironic name at this point. On top of that, it was kind of good practice that you would see two to three movie trailers before the movie started. Now it's 25 minutes or longer, at least at Regal. I don't know about AMC and some of these others. I don't have those options anymore. But holy crap. And I used to love going to the movies to see those trailers because the internet didn't exist in the early 90s. You would be seen for the first time some of these exciting new movies coming out. And man, was it a fun. I, I, in fact, I like the trailers often more than the movie itself. Or I mean, I was hyped more for the trailers than the movie. With the movie, I genuinely knew what to expect. With the trailer, it's anybody's guess what's gonna show up. But now with the internet and the release schedule, I'm seeing previews ahead of the film that I had seen six months earlier. Sometimes it's preview one and the second trailer's already been released online. So now I'm watching old ass trailer footage. That sucks. And Regal doesn't tell you the time the movie starts. So you'll be sitting there for a half hour just watching trailers you've already seen. Not good. At least give me a system where I know when the preview start and when the movie actually starts. I tried to tell myself, okay, the movie's at 3. I don't really need to show up till 3.30. Or 3.20 at least to be safe. But it's just, it's a, it's a guess. It's Russian roulette with the trailers. And I don't like it. I don't like watching the same trailer a million times either. So that's just one of the many ways that things have kind of lost their way. Another big thing that's really funny, a lot of people don't even know. Is that back in the day, movies released on a Friday night. The way to get a movie seen on a Thursday is to show it at 12.01 a.m. Because you're technically starting Friday. So they would have people line up way earlier in the day sometimes, depending on the film, for Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions. I remember sitting in line no less than four hours. Star Wars Episode One. It was it was seven or eight hours. You want to get those early line seats because you are a hardcore fan who wants to see the movie day one. So you got to secure a spot. 
it was awesome. And I've said, I've talked about this many times, some of these line experiences where you're playing cards, where you're doing movie trivia, where you're just talking about films with your buddies. They were often better than the film itself. It's just that, it's that fun experience you have. And these are memories I will always hold on to. We fast forward to today. It's hard to find those same great memories. In fact, the last time I remember going to a movie and getting any sort of real satisfaction like that was probably... I don't, Spider-Man No Way Home didn't even really do that for me. Yes, there was a fun, exciting crowd of people. But again, you're not building into this movie with hype, you know? You're not waiting in line for hours to get into the, the theater. There's nothing, there's no pageantry. There's nothing sacred to it. And you know it's going to be out on Disney Plus or wherever in a couple months anyways. So this is a very short-lived experience. I would say Star Wars Episode 1, I'm sorry, not Episode 1, Star Wars The Force Awakens Episode 7 was probably the last time I really got that grand experience. And there was a line for a couple hours to see this flick. And I remember going with some friends thinking, this is it, man. This is going to be something truly special. And it was truly special until the next movie came out, The Last Jedi. But we don't have to go down that road anymore. We've been there, oh, too many times. <laughs> I don't know. It's just different. It's really different. And even from a collection standpoint, there was nothing more exciting to me than when I, I heard a movie was going to be released on DVD. I wasn't really into the VHS era of collecting those, but DVD I was really into. I would buy movies that I didn't even like on DVD. I, at one point in time, owned a copy of Battlefield Earth. That movie is awful. I saw that in theaters and thought it was awful and then turned around and bought it on DVD because I liked collecting them. I know some people collect DVDs and Blu-rays and, and 4K steelbooks and all that stuff. And that's great. I, I kind of envy you in a way. It's just, it, I can't. With digital, the convenience, it's really hard to go back and, and open up the, you know, the box and put the movie in to the, the Blu-ray player and wait for an update or a way to skip through all the menus and all that shit. It's just easier to go on digital. As long as the streaming service is working at the time of, you know, the, the movie you want to watch. <laughs> and then you do it that way. Which is another dance altogether. We don't own our stuff anymore. We are paying for a service to basically rent movies from different apps. And at any point, they can get rid of the movie on said app. And it's happened so many times. And because all these things are listening, it, it, it knows popularity, it knows what people are looking for, and I swear, it never fails. There, will, I will have eight different apps at my disposal, but whatever movie we're talking about watching is MIA. It's nowhere to be found. I always have to rent it or find some other means to get the damn thing. It sucks. One point, and you know, these obviously... It can just be convenient. It just can be coincidence. It can be total coincidence. But we were talking about watching Happy Gilmore one day. The next night, we rent it. And the price jumped up seven bucks. I was going to buy it, actually. It was on sale. And then the next day, it jumped. It doubled or tripled in price. And I just thought, of course it did. Of course it did. It's just, it's just ridiculous that this stuff constantly happens. Yeah, you don't own it anymore. <clears throat> and it's not very fun to talk about movies like it used to be. Now everybody's in these camps. Everybody's fighting and, and talking about the drama behind the scenes. Or they're for some reason so invested in how much a movie makes at the box office. Because that tells them that it's a success. And that they'll get three more movies. We have been trained to think success in a film is if it has sequels. We've been trained now to not care about new properties. Elementals out now by Pixar. It's a Pixar movie. Pixar used to only spin gold new flicks. Once in a while they throw out a sequel, sure. But they were like the kings of making new movies and people would rush out to see them day one because it's Pixar. And now, Elementals tracking to lose a lot of money. No one wants to see it. And to the credit of the viewer, the trailer did nothing for me either. But it is Pixar, 
and I'm always going to give them an opportunity, even if they let me down with something like Buzz Lightyear or uh, Soul, I guess. Although a lot of people like Soul. They also, they also have a Luca and a Turning Red, and they're still making really good new material. Far better than these rehashes and remakes that Disney's doing with The Lion King and Aladdin and their golden age of animated cinema. That's not, there's nothing fantastical or new or fresh about them. They're the same movie, just recoded. It's boring. It's tepid. It's tap water. I don't want to drink it. I don't want to drink from that pool Little Mermaid swimming in. I want something new and original. So I'll take a million elementals any day of the week. <sighs> yeah, it's, um, it's just, it's just wild. I can't even keep up with the movies anymore. And I dedicate a very large portion of my time to watching films, dissecting films, talking about films, and reviewing them, of course. Someone mentioned that Extraction 2 is on Netflix. Okay, I still haven't seen Extraction 1. Because over on Paramount there's something new, and Apple Plus has something new. And because everyone's kind of segregated to these different apps, no one really has a unified thing to jump on. No one has the... You know, with cable, cable had a myriad uh, amount of issues. The, the, the commercials every five minutes sucked ass. The fact that you were pigeonholed to watch certain things at a certain time. There was no variety as far as you concerned. But on the other end of it, because of the simplicity, because of the nature that we all were kind of in this together, we also were able to talk about the same things together. We're all watching Friends. We're all watching Seinfeld. We're all watching whatever. There was only a small amount of options available with the birth of the internet and with the birth of all these different apps, the sky is the limit. We have everything at our fingertips at all times. So nothing is precious. Nothing has real value anymore. Nothing even seems like art anymore because the studios are making sure that again, they're conveyor belting this thing. They're trying to get out as much as humanly possible for as cheap as humanly possible while still appealing to the broadest set of people they can. It's overwhelming, it's exhausting, and quite frankly, it's boring. Now, that doesn't mean bad movies are just coming out and nothing else. There are a lot of good movies. There are a lot of really great movies, too. And I'm seeing them, and I'm talking about them. But again, it's not the same as it used to be. It's definitely not. I can't even think of the last time, I guess, everything, everywhere, all at once is as close as I remember to something truly special coming out. Something wholly unique and a little a little bit different than the, the norm. But otherwise, I just, I don't see the Matrix or, you know, the Terminator or the Jaws or the Godfather or any of that stuff like it used to be. And it might just be an age thing. That's very possible. But my kids also, I have two kids, 11 year old. And a 13-year-old, oh, she's 14 now, oh my god. 14-year-old and an 11-year-old, they like movies for sure. They're like me when it comes to movies in a sense. But they don't live and breathe it like I do. They don't hunt down, they don't seek out movies to watch like I do. Because they're so used to everything being right there all the time. It's kind of a bummer. <laughs> they don't... They don't know actor names like I do. They don't, and, and they've seen them. They know some, of course. But to us, actors were on a pedestal in one sense. They were, they were these big, larger-than-life people, these actors. And I guess that that's fine and probably healthy that they're not put on pedestals anymore. But taking their place, of course, are influencers online. So it's not like they went away and nothing took over. No, absolutely something took over. They're streamers on Twitch. They're fashionistas on Instagram. There's plenty of new blood out there that are doing things for lower effort and getting the same amount of admiration, if not more. That's, that's kind of a shame, I guess. The old guard of Hollywood is done. I think, I can't remember who said it. Maybe it was, um, who, I can't remember who said the quote, but basically it was, 
there aren't actors anymore. There are only characters and properties. And I think he's got a damn good point. I think he's probably right. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of new blood that has the same kind of weight and gravitas that the old actors did. Um, yeah, so that, that was just kind of a, the rant I wanted to go on. Just the, the little bit of a bummer that is the new modern way we watch and uh, consume content. I don't even call it movies really in a sense anymore because it's not. It's just their products. Their products that have been highly marketed to, highly polished and tweaked and refined by corporate execs, studio figureheads, and everything in between to make sure they push out the product that they think will become the next big brand. I just miss when Steven Spielberg made a film and people were like, damn, that was a good movie. I can't wait to see what he does next. Now it's, how does this movie tie into this film? Is Nick Fury going to go talk to Jaws at the end of this one and it's going to lead into the big friendly giant and that's going to lead into Fablemans and that's going to, like, it's all part of the Spielberg cinematic universe. Oh, what a miserable thing that would be. Let me know your thoughts, though. How do you feel about this stuff? Were you a collector at one point of movies and you've, you've since lost your way? Or you think back and reminisce on a time when you would get super excited for a movie to come out on DVD that you could finally pick up and watch again. Or go to the movie rental store and fight for the last copy of Baby's Day Out. Because that was the best option you had at the time. Lots of things to reflect on. Maybe you're in the other camp. Maybe you're a little bit younger and you're like, I love this. I love that I have all these options all the time. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit of a fight to search out the right app that has the right movie that I'm looking for. Sometimes it sucks that these guys all keep jacking their prices up and it's becoming more expensive to cable. But for the most part, it's a pleasurable experience and I like that um, I have a lot of variety. And I hear you on that. Variety is the spice of life after all. Okay, those are my thoughts. If you're on YouTube, please leave a comment. Let me know. If you're listening on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts, this is also a video version on YouTube you can watch. It goes up live at 8 p.m. every night. If you are listening on the, the podcast on Spotify or wherever, it's 8 a.m. over there. So you get it earlier, but you don't get to see my lovely face talking directly to you and joining you in the chat live because we do a premiere with this. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a $1 tier, a $10, $30. It goes up quite a ways. This is a one-man operation. I'm very passionate about this show and about movies. I've been doing this a long time, but I have a full-time job. I got a wife. I got kids. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot to do, but like I said, I have my job and I have the job that I love to do and I, I wouldn't have it any other way but it could use some support for sure. So I would appreciate anything you could do. Share the channel around, share the podcast around, and hopefully I get more eyes on it next time. Until then, I'll see you later.